to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. I've been doing this podcast since September of 2012, and boy, are my lips tired. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And happy to be doing this at all because uh, many listeners may not know. I, I just finished uh, an unexpected move, and so that's why there hasn't been any episode for the last three days. But uh, we're trying to get back into the swing of things and uh, hopefully uh, get going um, back on our regular schedule. Alex uh, sent me a note. She said uh, she's setting up. She's going to try to hook in, even though she's been uh, recovering from that surgery, but she's going to try to hook in in a little bit. So it'll be great to have her back. But meanwhile, I do have a guest joining me today, and her name is Kay Coat. And let me tell you, Kay went through something that no kid wants to go through. She was bullied when she was a young kid, and it really followed her for decades and she's here to not only tell that story but also to tell us how you break through and get back to being a, a happy healthy uh human being once again because Kay, i mean that's what you were at first right i mean you for the first few years of your life you were just this happy kid right i really was walt i and thank you so much for having me today um i'm honored to be here and share this story because it's something i i really hadn't opened up about i kind of went through this and from the ages of about five years old to 14, I was in a school system where I was chronically bullied on daily, usually. Uh, and it just, I just didn't know how to handle that as a kid. So after I was out of that school system, I just kind of shoved it aside until I got into my adult life. And I realized, okay, I'm starting to see some patterns here in my behavior. Maybe this has something to do with it. So I did a deep dive and I realized like, I wanted to get back to that vivacious little five-year-old who has all the love in the world and just loves to dance and sing and play and gets along with just about anyone. Um, so I'm kind of like channeling back to her, uh, getting in touch with my previous pre-bullied self. Which is cool. I love that. That's great. Uh, what, but, but tell us what some of the symptoms were that led you to realize that you had an issue that had been carrying on all this time. A few of the things I was dealing with were, you know, just like a lack of confidence. Um, I didn't put myself out there and I was scared to be who I am. And it's something I feel many people struggle with. You know, maybe they went through something similar or something completely different, but we start to take on the beliefs we're told as, you know, if something happens like that. And I just noticed I was holding myself back. And I was not in the best of relationships sometimes. Overall, I think I'm a pretty happy, healthy individual, but I struggle a lot of times with uh, with those things as well as a hypervigilance. Um, I, 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 if I meet someone and I, I just in myself, sometimes I over worry about what someone will think of me. And so I go into kind of a people pleasing mindset. So I'm kind of working on uh, like I love to be caring and kind, but how can I remember to like, remember those healthy boundaries and also allow myself to succeed and allow my gifts and talents to, to be at the forefront of my mind and to use them for good. It makes total sense to me. I mean, especially if you've been through a trauma that lasted that long, I mean, that's a lot, a lot of years that you were experiencing that. So it's kind of deeply ingrained into your nervous system. I mean, it's built into your subconscious mind just because you had so many repetitions of it. So, yeah, of course you're going to respond that way. I'm kind of surprised. I wouldn't be, I'd be surprised if you didn't respond that way or something similar to that. But of course, the challenge at that point is how do you break free of it? And that's, I'm sure, the part that everybody else wants to know about too, because we're always interested in anything having to do with improving mindset around here. So, and I'm sure that played a role. So, tell us how you broke through. Well, Walt, this has been a journey and it's an ongoing one. And my, I've always been really self-aware and really enjoyed uh, emotional intelligence and psychology. So I started to listen to a lot of podcasts and followed people on social media who have a real voice in the space and are licensed professionals. And along with that, I started going through yoga teacher training and I learned a lot about mindfulness and so I've kind of merged the two together and I call it mindfulness and action. So you, you find that sense of mindfulness and then you take action 
uh, say something like that negative bully voice, as I call it, that negative voice that rises up in me, I can, I can recognize, I can greet that voice and say, okay, this is what this voice is telling me. But that doesn't mean that I have to listen to it. I can take an action and step beyond that and say, send an email that I was too scared to send. Or like, it's a lot of little things and, and some big things, you know. So I've been kind of using those tactics as well as just to take a step back and ask myself, is my thought, is this my thought? Is it my own? Or is this something that is ingrained in me? And that's usually where I start. So that paired with journaling, with talking to mentors and trusted people in my life, as well as just having that grace with myself to to move forward and to know if that voice is telling me something, I can move past that. I can choose what to believe. And sometimes I can even lean in and say, what is this voice telling me that I don't know? So trying to befriend the inner bully as well. Yeah, that, that, especially that last bit. Uh, I've heard variations on that one. Um, another variation might be something like asking the voice, what is it that you need me to do? Or what is it that, I'm, that you're trying to teach me? Or something along that line. But yeah, that can be very effective. It's, it's a little bit weird the first time you hear about it. But assuming that you're not in a meltdown mode, that can be really effective. A hundred percent. And that's what's been kind of the joy about like learning this practice and practicing it more in my life, because ultimately I want to be able to use it better in those heightened stress phases as well to know that I can pause, take a step back. And like a lot of times those feelings come up, whether it be just random things throughout the day that cause it or a fight with someone that I care about, whatever it may be, where those thoughts really start to bubble up. And so that is kind of my next thing I want to tackle is like, how can I use this in the fight or flight phase rather than just in like a calm state of mind? Do do you have any uh, initial thoughts that you've developed at this point or is it all kind of experimental? Very experimental. I mean, a lot of times I try to uh, try to tune into some breath work. I I learned a really good breath work that is something that's helped me calm down from a fight or flight state or a sense of panic um, that sometimes arises. So that's been huge for me too. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. It, and it is a challenge because it, it, no matter what kind of um, traumas we go through in life, those traumas can manifest in a variety of different ways in our bodies, in our experience, in our behaviors, and so forth. And they, they can be recurring, and they can be challengingly recurring. And it's always helpful to get input and ideas from other people. How do you do that? How do you handle when, when you're in that kind of a situation? So that's why we love hearing your story and about how you know, what, what you've discovered along the way. Oh, give us the tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love sharing tips and tricks. So if I'm in a situation that arises, I I tend to, and I'm not perfect at this, I struggle a lot of times. It's after the fact that I kind of, I take the the dialogue or the situation that happened and I analyze it and I think of things I could say better the next time. So it's a lot of, just like kind of looking at my life as something's going on and taking myself out of the equation and looking from a bird's eye view down at the situation and viewing it from a place of almost objectifying it to a place of, okay, what's going on here? And taking my emotions out of it, knowing that the emotions are there, but just looking from a bird's eye view at the situation and looking what both parties have to say. And so that that kind of allows me to, I would say, formulate a better response for the next time around. And our friend Alex, the resilient, it says on the screen, the resilient Alex Dandy is back and joining us. How are you feeling, Alex? I'm doing better day by day. And and, and by the way, Kay, she will always give an answer like that. It doesn't matter what she's dealing with. doesn't matter what she's going through. I guarantee it's going to be something just as happy and positive as that. I love I don't that. Really, I'll, I'll try to corner her later. Like, how are you really doing? But- 
Hi, Alex. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. And uh, we, we were just getting a, a sort of a little workshop, I guess you could call it, uh, from Kay about how you go about dealing with mental traumas that, that stick with you and stay with you. She was bullied as a mm -hmm. child, and it really you know, carried with her for quite some time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she, she's been sharing, sharing some of her favorite things. And one of the things you mentioned, Kay, was journaling, which I want to mention because I had a lot of resistance to journaling. I mean, a lot Same. of resistance. You too, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and then uh, I went through a couple of things, including recently I, I went through a out of the blue divorce and I'm still kind of going through that. And as much as I hate it, I have to admit it works. <laughs> it's really kind of pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the simple things like the journaling, the walks, the yoga, the things that we all just say, eh, we'll do another day. Those are the things that work, I found. Yeah, I agree with that. Walks are my favorite thing too. I love those. But the, the journaling, um, my hand would cramp up. Uh, I'd be in instant pain in 30 seconds. And like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? But it would always work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been tough. Alex, I haven't asked you in a while. What, what You're dealing with a lot of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have any favorite techniques you're using that are working for you? Ironically, I did just start journaling like two weeks ago. Did you really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, like you, I had resistance to it because I'm like, Meh, I don't want it. I feel like if no one's going to read it. It's it's weird. Oh, hold on. I froze. How did I freeze? Oh, we'll bring you back in. Well, you're oh, in audio right now. We can I hear you. I that unplugged. Hold on. Okay. Well, while Alex is, is reconnecting, we'll, 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 we'll ask one more thing and then we'll, we'll get her response on that. Um, but Kay, when you've been uh, teaching other people, what, what kinds of uh, responses do you get in terms of, you know, who, what do people react well to when you're sharing ideas with them? You know, they, they really enjoy the simplicity. Like they're like, wow, it's so simple. It's that simple because my personality type is one that does like to simplify things because I know life is complicated and we can get overwhelmed with all the things. And so it's simple tactics done right, done regularly, consistently. And, and that really is what I found to be the best methodology. And like that's been resonating with people I share with. They're like, it, they make it seem so small. Simple and easy are very different words. Simple is a simplified so our brains can actually absorb the information and say, I can do this. I can get through this. Easy is totally when you indulge in something else and, and completely avoid a situation. And so <laughs> interesting definition. I like that. <laughs> I know that I do it. I know when I do it. I, I do both because I naturally do like to uh, stray away from something challenging hard, but just through repetition and it's kind of an exposure therapy somewhat too it's just you become more confident the more you keep going and the more confident you gain the more the momentum grows i'm also interested in something else that you described you described how um i can't remember what the exact wording was but you described how you would get uh into the fight or flight mode very easily and you you, you always have your defenses up and so forth and I kind of get the impression from what you described about yourself as a young girl that you, you were never really introverted, but what you're describing is what it's like to be introverted. I don't know if you knew that, but that, that, that's, that's what introversion feels like. That is so interesting. Um, oh, am I getting some echo? I feel like I'm getting some echo. <laughs> oh, we're getting a little echo. We're, we're, we're looping through you, Alex. Do you have uh, earbuds or headphones? Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. I'm going to mute you while you're doing that. And could you try to mute you? Maybe it's not going to let me. Oh, there we go. Now she's muted. <laughs> try again, Kay. Could you ask the question again? <laughs> uh, let's see. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, we were talking about personalities as a kid. Oh, oh introversion. Yeah. Introversion. Yeah, right. Yes. I think I am uh, more of an amniovert. So I, I'm sort of a, mm. I am an extroverted person, but I'm, very, like I analyze the situation before I walk into it. I'm very particular who I'm extroverted with. And so it's kind of like an extrovert by choice. Mm. I'm naturally charismatic and extroverted. I can, t I can make this with a tree, people tell me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty friendly and I will listen to anybody and hear them out. But when it comes to like who I share 
the, on that deeper level with, I, I like to um, be surrounded by uh, growth mindedness and, and, you know, people who are, have a really good heart. I think heart is a really big importance for me mm-hmm. because that's how I also share love is like, I have a big heart for people. So I've learned to, um, I've learned to tap into both sides of my introverted and extroverted self. Um, there's been times where I've been extremely introverted in just different situations in my life. Um, being bullied, I felt like I also, that extroverted kind of cr- creative vivacious side of myself was very stifled. And so I did become more introverted. Uh, but it, it's kind of, it's funny because I can kind of sway both ways, but I would say I'm more <laughs> extroverted now at this time in my life. Well, that's actually a good thing, being able to go both directions. I mean, because well, I'm an introvert who learned how to become extroverted. Mm-hmm. And a lot of what you were describing, I went through, I just came from the other direction. But it basically amounts to the same kind of thing. I'm selective. You know, I'm, I'm only close to certain people and they got to have certain characteristics and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you were describing the the pulling back part, my God, that's exactly what it feels like to be an introvert. You're pulling back <laughs> from everything constantly all the time. And it's something that, that you have to kind of unlearn. Um, I, I had one person propose to me the idea that introversion itself is learned and there might be something to that. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, that's I think so. Theory. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? I said, I think so. You think just so? Like, you think it's learned? Just like anything else is learned. You learn how to be an extrovert. So somehow you learn how to be an introvert too. Well, could be. It could be. I don't know. I haven't figured that one out. <laughs> anyway, you you were uh, describing to us your 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 favorite tools, Alex, before the audio started getting kind of crazy. So <laughs> yeah, weird. Um, yeah, but like I was saying, I did start journaling about two weeks ago, and I do feel better. And it's it's more of a guided journal, so it like it like charts down like what were your goals for the day, what did you accomplish, and what would you change about the day. So I like that better than just free writing. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I have a guided journal too, actually, right now. And it really does prompt me. And it's wild how when I open it up, what it's telling me is actually Mm -hmm. very accurate to what I'm going through most of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's almost a little like, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but yeah, that's super helpful to have some prompts sometimes Mm -hmm. because it can be hard to like know where to start. Right, right. I'm curious about that phrase what the journal is trying to tell you because i mean i've never had that experience i mean for me i'm just i sit down and i just write about whatever's going on and i that's about as far as i i I don't have a journal that talks to me i mean i have maybe other people can do that i haven't figured that part out you know so i'm curious (laughs) about that (laughs) it's it's i've done both too i've had like i do free writing and and now i journal and i i honestly too i to kind of like bringing it back to podcasting even I my podcast is a form of journaling for me because of the mm. just the nature of what I talk about on the show is very much aligned with those thoughts and feelings that I do a lot of my journaling I would say through my podcast it sounds that's weird. a great point I've been doing a podcast for 10 years and I never thought of that that's really you've cool. been journaling this whole time <laughs> and you knew? didn't even want to <laughs> <laughs> well, this kind I like because my hand won't cramp up with this one. You know, so that's right. good. I like that. Yeah. Except when technology goes off the fritz and your brain cramps up. That, so. <laughs> that, that doesn't hurt my hand. It's okay. It hurts your brain, though. <laughs> well, again, yeah. Actually, even with that, though, I've gotten to the point where, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Some, some sort of technological ghost has gotten in here again. Hello. Yep. How you doing? <laughs> it's the gnomes. <laughs> there is something. I experienced something the other day, too, where I swear it was. I, it was funny because I feel very much in tune, like what I'm working on right now is very much my own path. And then of course the system on my work computer froze and I couldn't even log in. And I was like, okay, universe is telling me you got to finish your podcast episode. So that's exactly what I did. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So tell us more about the podcast. What's the name of it again? Yes. So the podcast is called Elevated You Podcast and I just launched it in January However, I've been podcasting for three years, kind of circling around the same health, wellness, motivation kind of wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until this January when I was at this crossroads where I was in the middle of rebranding and I said, there's a missing link. I need to figure it out. And that's exactly when it hit me. Like that's, I literally went online, was scrolling through Instagram and I read 
uh, something from the holistic psychologist and she posted about hypervigilance and, um, and bullying. And that was like an aha moment. And the second I saw that I posted it and I shared, I said, this, I, this totally makes sense for me. I went through nine years of bullying. And it was after that, one of my old classmates who she didn't bully me, but she, she, she wasn't, she was my friend more, but she didn't like, she was apologized in her message back to me and said, I wish I would have stuck up for you uh, mm -hmm. all those years. And that validated my feelings. Cause I always thought, oh, I'm just being, I'm just being a wimp. I'm, you know, I, I should just be able to take this. This isn't affecting my life. And for someone to reach out and say that I, it, I, I knew right in my soul, I was like, this is what I need to podcast about. Like this needs to be the premise. Like this needs to be the underlying, my why behind why I podcast. And since then, I kid you not, it's been a revolutionary. Uh, I just gave a speech in Orlando about it, like at a, at a podcaster's expo called Podfest. It's like, and this literally happened middle of January. And since then, it's like everything is unfolding the way it should. It's been like kind of, kind of a miracle. That's really great. Yeah. You, you basically opened up some energy waves there and stuff's flowing as a result. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Totally. I love that. I'm still thinking about what you said about podcasting being a form of journaling. I mean, it's just like <laughs> circling in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And it's so true. Like, mm -hmm. it really is because it's a, you know, we, we're we verbal processors. So mm -hmm. by verbally saying what's on our minds, we can process it out and we can uh, make sense of things that we're going through. And then especially if you have a dialogue, if you have someone else that you're talking to, that's when these little aha moments come up. It's like, why didn't I think of that? Well, that's why these conversations happen because then, you know, two, two heads are better than one. So you can kind of work through different things together. So yeah, exactly. different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. was the word I was thinking of too. I, mm -hmm. I use that word a lot because I love the perspectives of all the different people mm -hmm. who've been here on the show and I've learned so much from them. And, and you're right that it, it's kind of an enhanced form. It's, it's, um, I don't know, journaling on steroids or something because it's not just you saying stuff. Or, or writing stuff, you're also getting input from others. And in that input, you're getting ideas, you're giving them ideas. And there's, there's like a synergy that builds that mm -hmm. synergy goes way beyond what we can do individually. So it's like, it, it's, a, it's super powerful journaling. <laughs> it really is. Right. Yeah. So how many episodes have you done in, in the past year? I actually have just launched episode 105. Uh, yes, Whoa, so, congratulations. Thank you. It's been, when I hit 100, wow, it just like, it just woke me up. I was like, wow, you've been doing this for three years now. It was a fluke thing when I got started. It, it happened during the pandemic. And um, I love to share this story. I was uh, offered a live radio show for funsies. Mm -hmm. And I'd always had a kind of a background in acting and presenting and things like that. So I thought, oh, this will be fun to try. Went in, learned all the board. I learned how to run and, and do production. Um, and then I just, after, you know, when the pandemic hit, I was started to produce from home and send my content in. And I started doing like these interviews and I realized, I was like, why don't I just like go out on my own and do this pod as a podcast and that. That's when it happened. And I launched my first podcast called The Wow Factor. And since then, I've been pretty consistent. I've taken a few breaks between, but I would say I'm, I'm pretty consistent about it. And yeah, that's kind of how it started. <laughs> that's interesting because when I started my podcast, it wasn't uh, regular radio. It was online radio. It was an online station that, that still gets feed on our episodes called PRN. And same kind of thing. They contacted me. I, I, I started a different kind of show at that point. And after a couple of years, it was uh, news and politics related. And it got really depressing. I said, I don't want to keep doing this. <laughs> can, I, can I do this law of attraction thing? I know it's woo-woo and so forth. And they said, yeah, sure. That'd be great. Said, oh, good. I like that. <laughs> so that's how I switched it over. But same kind of thing. Yeah. Starting with a, a radio type environment and then moving over to podcasting. And I, I don't know what your reason is. My reason was first because I needed to learn stuff and I needed to, to learn from experts. And then it's just because it was fun. I mean, I mean, after the first few hundred episodes, I figured I got the uh, the LOA part down, but I just I wanted to keep going because it's like a it, it's a drug that you don't have to pay for. 
hundred <laughs> percent. It's so much fun. I I love podcasting and I love the conversations I've had. I learn from every guest. You know, that's why I do it. It's kind of a selfish endeavor sometimes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah. And we share it, you know, we share the knowledge forward. And that's been the, it's been so much fun. Like honestly getting, when I get someone that reaches out to me, like say on Instagram and a DM and says, wow, this episode really changed my life. Wow. It's like, you're, you're my friend in my corner who's just helping me. And I just think this has an impact. And like, mm -hmm. I get really emotional about it in a good, good way because it's like, wow, this is so much bigger than anything I you know, that I'm thinking about, it's like, if this is touching people's lives and encouraging them to go for their goals and elevate their mind, their well, their well being and elevate themselves to their true purpose. Uh, if I can help one person like that, that's exactly what I want to do. It's I, I just I love it. Did, did you have the experience that I had when I first realized that people were listening? And I thought, Oh, my God, I have listeners. <laughs> a little bit it's a little daunting because it you're is like, you're like i better give some good advice right, if exactly. i have an off day <laughs> you got a responsibility at that point right 100 percent to be a voice <laughs> yes um but it, it just feels like it feels so right like i feel like this is the path i'm meant to be on at least at least at this time in my life that um and it's a medium that's so fun and people are really latching on to this this podcasting medium so yeah it's been good all right, so let's tie this back to um, your experience that got the whole thing started because you were bullied for nine years in school. And we led this through to podcasting and decided that's a, a rather interesting and powerful form of journaling. So what have you learned from the podcasting that you've been able to apply to help yourself get better regarding the bullying that occurred? For me, the number one thing the podcast has done is create a community. Mm -hmm. And it's inclusive. And that's the beautiful thing. Anybody can listen to it. It's it's out there for anyone for the taking, whoever wants it. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing. There's there's no exclusions. And when you're bullied, it's a very you, you feel very excluded. You feel very alone. And the podcast allows me to connect with not only my my guests, but my listeners, because I feel like it's something that can be used as a form of if someone's having a bad day, they can turn a podcast on. I, I've turned podcasts on that from that I love. When I'm having a day where I'm feeling down in the dumps, whatever it is, I turn a podcast on because it's like you're in the room with the, with the people on the microphones and mm -hmm. I catch myself responding. And by it's transformative. And it's like by the end of the episode, I feel like I've got a new like stride. I've got a new like going about my day with a new attitude and if I can be that for others and help them feel included and help them feel motivated, then that that's been my biggest takeaway, honestly. And that's how I've kind of used it to come back to the bullying thing. It's like you've always got a friend on the other side of that podcast. And I try to respond to my DMs and I'm I just want people to know that they can be heard and that mm -hmm. their voice matters and that everyone wants to be loved and accepted. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, very true. Very true. It, well, the other thing that I've also learned is that when you do it long enough, you develop a lot of contacts. Um, I, I do both co-host and guests, as you can tell, Alex is a co-host. And uh, when I first started going through the, the divorce that I'm going through, it was a complete shock to me. And it was my friends through LOA Today who helped me get through it. People who have been co-hosting with me, and people like Alex. And wow, I mean... I, if, you know, 30 years ago, if you had told me that my best friends were going to be online doing a, a show with me, I would have said, oh, okay, right. <laughs> but they are, and it's wonderful. And, and I think part of it is because you know, we're, we're talking about stuff that we all have, have an interest in, and that creates a bond. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a bond of, of shared interest, and then it's, it leads to a more personal bond with, with each of the different people. So yeah, to me, that's one of the biggest parts. That's, that's just huge. Um, so I was listening to what you said about when you get that email, and I love those emails too, when you get a listener who you really resonated with. Uh, I imagine you probably have gotten emails from people who, who've mentioned that you know they got bullied. And I'm wondering, was there anything in particular that they picked up on that you shared that really just you know made a difference for them? You know, that's been the beautiful, beautiful thing about this is, you know, I just launched this and within a week I had people telling me about 
their kids going through it right now. What can I do? And that really made me think, I was like, what did I do? And, and I remember thinking like when I was young, um, I was very creative. And so I would come home and I would sing and I would draw and I would write. And ironically, the first thing I ever did, I got on my old cassette tape recorder and I recorded, I called them my radio shows. And I would just talk into my little, my little boom box. And I would tell the other kids who are being bullied, there was no real listeners, but I was like talking to like, like I had an audience and said, you don't have to listen to them. You can be you and you're going to be okay. And it's just, I had to like think back to that self. And I, I you know I ended up telling this friend, I was like, if your if your kid is creative, allow them to find outlets that work for them that like maybe they can get involved with a group of kids, extracurriculars that are creative or find something that's outside of the school system or outside of the situation where they're being bullied, where they can find those friends. And so it's been just like kind of a one, one at a time. I've been um, trying to find the right things to say to help everyone who's been, a, who's been asking about it. And I think as I get these questions into me, I'm learning along the way at how to respond. And then I'm just building up this beautiful kind of log of different things I can talk about to share about because it's pain points that people are having right now that I can share about, that I can find a guest that is an expert in that field and we can talk about that subject. So if that answers your question, it was a little long-winded, but it's, yeah, it's very much like a case by case. You're muted, Walt. It probably there works better go. if I actually take the mute button off, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit. How that works. But what I was trying to say is that uh, it, it, it's a really great idea you had about um, having them basically do their own show into a tape recorder, even though nobody else listens to it. Because, you, well, I don't know if you ever played it back for yourself. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If you did, you basically just reinforced the power of what you were doing. It, it's, it's the same kind of thing that, you know, if people record, you know, their affirmations and then play the affirmations back, they're hearing it in their own voice. And mm -hmm. so they're reprogramming their neural pathways. I don't know if that's what you were intending to do, but that's powerful. That That's a really powerful process. That's I was doing that at five years old. That was my coping because kindergarten hit and I was like, why am I not liked? Like, what did I do? Mm. And I would just come home and like my medium that I had was this, this old, old boom box with a double cassette player on it. And I just did it. I didn't even, I don't even know if I knew what I was really doing. Cause I was, I must've known like what a radio show was, but I just sort of did it. And now it's, it's kind of, it kind of gives me like the chills thinking this is what I do for a living now. Mm -hmm. You Well, you were doing something very intuitive. I think you, you just mm -hmm. intuitively realized this is going to help. You didn't necessarily know how, but there was that inner voice saying, just, just do this, do this. This is going to be good. Very much. And it's like, I just had to become my own best friend. And that's kind of how I go through life is just, yeah, that, that I'm very intuitive and I'm very kind of uh, emotionally aware. And that I think it just like, yeah, it just did it, did it out of the self-preservation out of the experiences I was having. And just like, I didn't want any other kids to suffer like I was suffering. And I really wanted to talk to them. And I kind of used my imagination that they were on the other side. And now, you know, we're all grown up, but we're still dealing with the same battles of day to day. So it's almost like I'm living that prophecy that I had as a child. And so it's beautiful. And yeah, yeah it just hit me. It like just hit me now that this is what I'm doing. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. fabulous. <laughs> Alex has actually, she, she, we describe her as uh, the woman who is the queen of personal boundaries. So she's really strong on, you know, not letting other people give her crap. But I'm curious, Alex, were you ever bullied? Have you ever experienced bullying? I don't think so. I, there was probably, there was this one girl, we're, we're friends now, but she used to, um, she didn't like me because I was friends with her best friend. Like, ah, so that's, that's goodness. what that was. So that was the only incident I had. She used to pretend there were mosquitoes on my back and slap me all the time. Oh, yeah, she's such a dick. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the only instance of bullying I ever had, I, I think. Unless there's something I'm blocking out or that I don't re recognize as bullying. But yeah. 
Well, it doesn't surprise me that it wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't anything else because mm -hmm. you don't take crap from anybody. Nah, not once, not yeah. never. No. <laughs> I got to learn from you because I I'm a people pleaser by nature, so I've been working on that one. That's been a big one. So I'm working on new boundaries and mm -hmm. like speaking my mind more because it's just ugh, it gets too heavy by dealing with. It does. It does. You just gotta. It's like Dare used to say, "Just say no." And it's okay to say no if it's, if it doesn't suit you. And then ask yourself, why? Why are you doing this for this person? Why are you letting this person sway you either way or whatever is bothering you? Why? And once you figure out why, then you can say no. I love that. I like it. It's a very simple tactic. And I we yeah. were talking earlier, simple tactics are so much more digestible than, than anything. So I love that. Right. <laughs> And it also makes sense, too, because one thing that we do know is that no matter what the behavior is, no matter how much it may be harming us, there's a payoff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what that question asks. It asks, okay, what's the payoff for you to basically self-abuse this way by giving this power to this other person? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a payoff in there somewhere. And, of course, we're trying to avoid finding it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or we wouldn't do it. <laughs> or we wouldn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, this introspection stuff is really something. Mm -hmm. And I say that, as like I said, I was originally an introvert, and introverts are always self-introspective. Uh, but even when you have that tendency, it doesn't mean that you do it healthily. Mm. Healthily, mm. You, you, you can you can be introspective in an unhealthy way. Example. And, oh, yeah. Geez. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Um, well, taking uh, the example of somebody who is your friend who is giving you a hard time because of like what we said, somebody you, you were friends with somebody else and they were their best friend or something like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Some kind of thing like that. An unhealthy way to be introspective about that would be to justify why that person was snubbing you. Well, you know, they do have the right to have their own personal friend. And I kind of am imposing on them because that, you know, they, that, that was their best friend. I, I should have asked first, you know, that kind of introspection, that's damaging. The self-sabotage of it all. The self-sabotage, right. Mm -hmm. So it can go either way. You, you have to actually choose to be healthy about it. Truth. You have to make healthy choices. And, and that's probably the hardest part if you don't have a role model or some kind of modeling system to draw upon. Yeah. I mean, I, I recall a conversation I had with a psychotherapist one time who pointed it out that uh, she had uh, no, she, she had parents who gave her no model of how a marriage worked. Mm. Mm. And if, you know, so she would try to create a marriage and it wouldn't work mm -hmm. or even a relationship, just, you know, a basic relationship. And, and she couldn't understand why it didn't work. Why? Because she didn't know mm -hmm. how the inner workings worked. Mm -hmm. She just, you know, did the surface. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I could see that in my own life too with my, yeah, my upbringing. Yeah, that's deep. I think we, we, we rely on those models. Yeah, yeah, we do. And then if we don't know what's broken, we don't, we only know what we know. And if we don't know how to unlearn it, it's like we just keep going with those bad practices and life choices. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I def definitely see some of those aspects in my life too. So with that, with the personal side of things like that. I'm also mindful of how we can become dependent upon those models and i had an example come into my life just in the last couple of days because um as you know Kay, and i think alex you knew that i uh, moved to a new home over the last few days no i didn't and, know oh okay yeah this came out of the blue actually like eight days ago i found out i had to move oh wow so it was one of those really super fast moves but i pulled it off i'm in the new place it boxes all over the place that's why i'm not using my usual setup you don't see my, gotcha. my starry night screen and all that i'm doing a handheld mic because i don't have everything set up but it's working, you know, we're, we're, we're sitting here in the new home. But uh, one of the movers who moved me, his mom passed in the past five days, oh. um, past, past week at this point. And as he was telling me that, I'm giving him sympathy and, you know, uh, understanding where he's coming from. He tells me he didn't have a father. He had no idea. Who, he has no idea who his father was. He has no siblings. He has no other family. He just lost his entire family with his mom. Oh, dying. wow. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, well, first of all, I'm giving him as much support as I can reasonably do as a customer. I'm a customer of his. I can't really, right. it's a business relationship. I can't really do much there. And I certainly 
am not in a place where I, I should impose myself. But I'm thinking about, wow, what happens when you when your basic model gets cut out from underneath you? Mm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you 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 still have whatever you learned from that model, but now it's like your life's been turned upside down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is something I know something about, having gone through this divorce. But when your life is turned upside down, it it, <laughs> it literally feels like your life just co- got pulled out from underneath your feet. Yeah. Like, where did my right. life go? It, it was here a moment ago. I I know I just saw it. <laughs> yes. Very it's true. Very disorienting. And that's when that's when you realize and, and acknowledge, first of all, how valuable the model was. It's also when you realize how important your connections are to other people that you're close to. And it's also when you realize on some level how much or how little self-esteem you have. Because mm. I find those are the, mm-hmm. the factors that help us get through the really tough times the most. I mean, if you were bullied, Kay, I imagine your self-esteem was fairly low and I imagine you built it up over time. It, it's a work in progress. Yes. And there's certain things that's trigger, uh, that trigger me to go back into that mindset still. And I do notice when those things happen. Um, ironically, the big stuff I've been relatively good with, I've went through some hefty things in my my years that we could do like two and two more hour show to talk about, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then it's the little things when I'm, when it's the quiet moments, the complacency, mm-hmm. the moments where I get in my own head, mm. those are what get me the most. I, I don't know why that is, but that's where I struggle is in those moments where I get, where my brain starts to just kind of spiral. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I've been, trying to work on just being calm or being like, okay, Kayla, did you make that thought up about this person? They have no reason for like not getting an email back or something, Mm -hmm. something dumb. And it's like, oh, they don't like me. Oh, I Mm -hmm. said something dumb. Something like that starts to roll in my head. And then it's Mm -hmm. like, I get an email back. Sorry. Like I just missed I just say, forgot to hit the send button. And I'm like, okay. Then I'm like, now I can take what I learned in that experience and be like, the next time that happens, I can say, okay, what's the reality here? Mm-hmm. And just give people the chance to, I, I don't have to be that hyper vigilant. I could just be like, okay, it's probably something dumb. You didn't do anything to merit a, someone to not like you or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. So. And that last step's that. the biggest one, really, because you were willing to recognize what it was and make a change based on it or to remember it or to store it away as data. That We often skip that. Uh, and we often skip recognizing you know, the gratitude the, for, for having acquired the information or having experienced you know, a thank you or whatever it might be. We, we, we blow these things off because we're really tough on ourselves. And, and, and when you're tough on yourself, that's one of the things you do. You, you don't give yourself credit for good things that happen. Mm-hmm. So you gave yourself credit. That was pretty good. Is it, one time a, a previous guest of mine said a great phrase that I, it still sticks with me. What we go through, we can grow through. Mm. And mm. it's like every experience we have in life, good or bad, is either it can be a lesson or a blessing. It, it can be it, – we can take something from every aspect of our life, even the hardest, even the scariest. There is something you can learn through it and try again or pivot or maybe repair you know there's there's so many things to do instead of going into a self-loathing mindset or something where you're you know like for me that's what i do i'll like go self-loathing like i'll blame myself and it's instead it's like okay no what are you experiencing and what's going to be at the other side of this because there is an end to this you know there's this isn't going to go forever what's the end goal How can I get through this and how can I find the support when I need it? Those are kind of like my go-tos when I'm going through something that's, that's really challenging me as a person. There's also another aspect that comes to my mind, which is uh, recognizing the power of the emotions that we experience Mm -hmm. as we go through these things. Um, The last four months during this divorce process, I've really come to know that firsthand and it can it kind of sneaks up on you at times like oh my goodness where did that come from you know i i did that one th- three weeks ago why is that one back but it does it mm-hmm. just pop, pops in and just kind of takes over 
And as a, a formerly well-trained male who learned how to uh, completely repress the emotions and who has since learned how to let them out and run around and, and uh, do their thing, um, it's even more of a, a, of a contrast. It's even more of a, it's almost a trauma in itself. It's not really because it's letting out traumatic energies and, and letting them out of your body. But it feels a little bit traumatic when you don't have years and years of, of doing that, even though you've been around the planet for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really noticing that. I was having a conversation with a friend about uh, just an incident that happened a couple of days ago. And I was just blown away by how, yes, I'm, I'm really proud of myself that I have learned to let those emotions, to, you know, to express them, to get them out and so forth. But it still feels really weird. And it mm -hmm. still feels really uncomfortable. And I imagine myself, wow, there are so many people, women in particular, learn how to to get it out. Men are, are more trained to, to keep it in. And I think, wow, you guys, I wonder if you realize just how weird it feels when you haven't been doing it for so many years. I mean, mm. th does it feel natural to you guys? I don't know. You tell me. Which part? The crying? Any kind of uh, rough emotion. It can be crying. It can be anger. It can be frustration. It can be almost anything. But you know when, when when it's coming out very often for me it just feels oh it's that alien thing again you know that because i used to repress it for so long i used to think mm. of it as an alien and i i haven't completely gotten rid of that i still i, I get it out now but i still have that old feeling and, and i get the feeling you guys don't think of it that way i don't yeah i do do you really do you i do i sometimes struggle with emotions like i struggle mm. letting them out because i felt very much like I have to keep them in and just like different relationships oh, in my so life. That up. Okay. And I, so mine come, mine bubbles up. Sometimes my emotions bubble up as a panic attack or it's like, mm. or I'll get like, um, like I'll get a psychosomatic pain source or mm. something that my body responds or my, or inflammation or something like that, where it is coming out because I'm not releasing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I'm actively working on through my yoga and through breath work. And just through sometimes I have to like I make allow myself to cry. So I put on certain types of like television shows or something. I put on like literally um like American Idol when they had like hit the golden buzzer or whatever that is. The <laughs> one where they hit the America's golden buzzer. Got Talent. Yeah, yeah. And they hit the yeah. golden buzzer and I watch those, like the ton of them, and I just am like, Woo, they're just so happy. <laughs> like, I had a friend like, who came in second place. Huh? Year. I said I had a friend who came in second place one year. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Went to a pretty awesome high school. Not going to lie to you. <laughs> I wish I would have been there, honestly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have said that about Alexis High School, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. But I love that, that you're, you're drawing on that. You're, you, that's another example of having... A process really i mean mm -hmm. it, it may not be a process written in a book but you have a process of go to you know your favorite uh, uh playbook or, you know playlist of, of youtube videos or something and just play through them to get yourself into that better feeling space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that do, do you have other i mean I, I i actually probably have to create another one because now that i've moved all of my lists got pulled off the wall and i had to you know i have to set up new lists but i used to have a list up of you know, it's like 15, 16 different items that I can do to just lift my vibe if I'm struggling with something or feeling down or whatever. Just because when you're when you're not in a good space, when you're feeling depressed or angry or frustrated or whatever, you can't see very far. Mm. You're, you're kind of in a limited space. And it's kind of hard to remember. So what do I do? I can't remember what I do. What is it that I do in order to feel better? Because I, I can't find that right now. So I have mm -hmm. my list. I can look at the list. Sometimes I forget what the list is too. That doesn't help. But, but <laughs> do you have a do, do you have a list of things that you do? I do. Um, the number one thing I do is I dance. I love it. Ooh. I just get up and I dance in my living room. Put my earbuds in. I look like a crazy person. I'm sure to my neighbors. <laughs> um, but I love to dance, and it's actually served me so well. I think movement in general for me mm. is my number one. Especially if the anxiety bubbles up, to go for a walk actually helps release. Um, cause you, you have the eye movement, uh, it goes back and forth and that actually is a calming mechanism in our brains that helps us calm down. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole science behind that, but it is like when you're out walking and you can see the sensories in your eyes 
uh, actually are calm because they know what's going on the, around them. Because if we're staring at a screen, that can really bring up a lot of anxiety. So that's usually when it happens. And so if I get up and just start moving around, get up, put on a really, really upbeat song, get my vibe up. Um, that's my number one. My number mm-hmm. one is that. My number, like my other number one, have a good conversation. I call my mom or a good friend, send a voice note to someone or put on a podcast if I need to like fake a conversation, just like mm-hmm. have to get my mind off something. Um, so those are my few. And then of course, like, I mean, sometimes the power of prayer, just like getting the words out and just like getting them into the universe. And that that's a big one too. So those are kind of my go-tos. I think all of them uh, are energy releases. And then, of course, breath work. That's when I go to if I'm having a serious, like, panic heightened. Just all of a sudden, out of the blue, I get, like, panic. Or if I'm flying and you get a little turbulence, I go into a breath mm. work. So. <laughs> uh, Alex, do you have a list of uh, go-tos? Um, I'm also going to say dance. I like to turn on turn on a little uh, – My I have specific playlists for specific moods. So if I want to hear some bangers, I, ha- I have that list. If I want to hear some romance songs, I have that list. It depends on what mood I'm in. But um, most of the time, I like to cook while I'm listening to my bangers. Oh. Yeah, because that way I know I'm going to have I'm going to sit down with the TV and have a good meal. So it's like a whole thing I do all at once. I love that. Okay. That's nice. That's right? a good routine. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I got to jump in, too, because uh, I, I'm not – so much of a boogie type dancer i'm a social dancer ballroom and that kind of thing mm-hmm. so and, and that for me is one of my favorite ways to to release some line energy and get into that good mood so yeah i had to jump in on that too <laughs> i love that I've, I've got a ballroom background too do you yes i love it i took it in college and then i've taken like little um classes and things along in my adult life and i absolutely love it my favorite is latin i mm-hmm. love, i love salsa dancing Salsa dancing and salsa dancing. So, 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 salsa is the one that threw me the most. I, I I made a mistake with salsa. And the mistake was um, the, the teacher that I, I'm going through now, uh, I, I hadn't, first of all, I hadn't been dancing in years. I used to dance back when I was in my, my 30s. Um, and then I stopped during my marriage. And then with the marriage ending, I decided, okay, I'm going to go back into the social dancing again because that was always a really great thing. I met new people and so forth. So I started taking some classes um, with a group called Hartford Ballroom because I live near Hartford, Connecticut. And the classes have a, it, it, they, they have it sort of like a, in a step program. So um, for any given week, there are going to be four classes, a beginner level, a sort of a beginner two, intermediate and advanced for four different dance styles. And then they rotate through. So last month's beginner becomes the new beginner two. Last month's beginner two becomes the intermediate, so on mm. and so forth. And the first month that I jumped in, uh, the third style was swing, which is the one I had, I have down pat. So I figured, well, I can jump in on level three swing <laughs> on the same day. The fourth one was salsa and I'd never done salsa. Well, I think I just, I took one lesson one time. I said, Oh geez, I don't know if I can do this. And I, and I told the teacher, you know, I, I'm not sure I can jump in on a level four salsa. And it's been a lot of, I mean, I used to dance a lot, but it's been a lot of years. She says, well, you know, try it if you like. And if, if it doesn't work out, I'll give you your money back and no, no hard feelings. I said, well, all right. I don't want to ruin your class because I could really screw <laughs> things up here. It was the hardest thing I've ever done because, I mean, I was so far behind everybody else and I'm, I'm desperately trying to, to catch up. I ended up having to take two privates with her just to catch myself up on the class. Um, I can see where I would love it because it's very similar to hustle. It's similar to swing. It's, it's similar to a, a, a number of different styles where there's a lot of arm movement that makes it look a lot more complex than it really is. Mm-hmm. And, and so I can see how that would be fun, but uh, I, I can't say I'm quite there with the salsa yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, especially for the guys because of the leading. It's like, I could see like, cause like having to lead is so much like I can pop in as a follow pretty easy if someone knows what they're doing with salsa. Mm-hmm. But leads have to know the moves more. And so mm-hmm. I, I totally feel that. And yeah, but kudos for you for jumping into a level four salsa like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good for you, man. Couldn't be me. <laughs> I, 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 still basic I scraped my way through it, but I got through it. <laughs> That's all that matters. You got through it. I got mm-hmm. through it. I could probably do a salsa now, but ooh, yeah. <laughs> and, and as for the leading part, it, what happens is... I mean, you know how this is when you're taking classes in, in any dance style, you start to develop a muscle memory for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that, that's what, really what you, you rely on. Well, when you're uh, the leader in, uh, in couples dancing, 
you do the same thing there. You develop a, I, I wouldn't call it a muscle memory. It's more like a movement memory. Mm -hmm. And so at first you're trying to think everything through. And of course that's when everything screws up, but eventually it's kind of like when you have certain movements and steps that you're used to repeating over and over again. So as a follower, you just know, okay, I can feel that. So I'm going to go in this direction and do that. The same thing happens with the leading. You, you, you develop just sort of this intuitive flow because you've, you've done, you know, this to that, to that, to that many, many times. And if you do that often enough, then you find you can start mixing them up and, you know, it's kind of fun to see, okay, what, what else can I, how can I transition this to that and all that kind of thing. So I, I mean, I totally can get how it would be really easy actually once you've been doing it for a while to lead in salsa. Cause I find swing is really easy to lead. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm definitely one of, the, one of the better leaders in swing. Um, some of the other dances that would have similar stuff, uh, like, uh, nightclub two step, or, um, let's see, what are some of the others? There, there are a few others that have a number of different arm movements and, and in all of them, you're just, you don't think it just like you don't think steps. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have, it's almost like you have impulses. Uh, you're in the middle of this one. Oh, impulse to do that. Impulse to do that. Impulse to do that. Because yeah. there's no other time. You, there's no time to think about it. You, you, you're just going bang, bang, you know, one measure after another, bang, 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 different move, different move, different move. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. So you have to go on impulses, but the impulses come through and it's very much like muscle memory. Yeah. They do. <laughs> and it comes back. Like, it's so crazy because I was just in Orlando this past weekend and went out and I, one thing I wanted to do was go salsa dancing in Florida. I was like, mm. I, that's the one thing I was at this conference. It was great. <laughs> I was like, I really want to go salsa dancing. And I went out and I was dancing with a gentleman from the group and he did a move. And I was like, ah, oh, he knows salsa. Like that from one move, I knew. I was like, okay, this guy knows. And I looked at him, I was like, you know how to salsa dance? And he's like, yeah, I do. And then we, so we salsa, and like we were doing twists and turns all night. It was great. Nice. Um, I had a blast. I absolutely loved it. And it's so fun when you find people who do know how to do yeah. a dance style because it's like, it just makes it so much fun because you can, especially like, it, like something that has some advanced twists and turns because it's like, oh gosh, it just was like, I like, and talk about high energy. That was like, yeah. that was like one of the highlights of my trip was mm. being able to do that. I get that. I get that totally. And Orlando, my brother's actually in Orlando. I, I'll have to ask him where the, where the, the hot salsa hotspot is, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was the blue martini. That's where we went. The blue martini. Okay. <laughs> it's in this cute little area. Yeah, Sounds was, about right. Yeah, <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. So, okay. So we all have dancing on our, our go-to list for processes to do when we're, when we're not feeling it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. This I'm looking at the clock. My God, we just went through 57, almost 58 minutes as usual. I said the same thing in my head. I was like, I know I got here late, but, uh, yeah, what? that was quick. Right? <laughs> that was really quick. All right. Well, before we wrap up, we got a good couple of things. First, we have to get a piece of information from you, Kate, because um, you have uh, um, the, the podcast. We want people to be able to find the podcast. Mm -hmm. We also want people to be able to find you. I mean, how do they find you? Well, you can go to my website. Uh, it's just kcote.com, uh, K-A-Y-C-O-T-E.com. Uh, you can find me there as well as I'm on social media at the kcote, all one word on Instagram. And I just started getting into the TikTok world. So come watch me fumble on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so those are my two places. And reach out, DM me, like, follow, enjoy the content. That's what it's for. That's beautiful. Nice. I love that. Um, and I, I also like to share with all of my guests, and this is definitely true for you, especially as a podcaster, because there are many people that you'll never meet and you'll never see who heard you on the podcast, or perhaps they read something that you wrote or something like that. And you touch their lives, you help them. Some of them, they'll send you an email or, or an IM or something, but most of them you'll never hear from. And yet you're still helping them. You're still touching their lives. You're still being a benefit to them. And we don't get enough appreciation for that. So mm -hmm. on their behalf, I want to thank you for what you've been doing with your podcast and, and for what you're going to continue to do, because you're, you're really doing a wonderful po uh, public service by doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to just be here and be a part of this energy for this hour and just like reach people and make friends. That's what it's all about. So yeah, I'd love it. Um, if anybody wants to check it out, Elevated You podcast on all platforms. And I'd love to hear what you think. And I'd love if they like send me DMs and give me ideas for topics you want to hear about. 
Let me know if you've been bullied or uh, yeah, anything. I am a total open book. That's beautiful. And Alex, since you, you did come in uh, later than you wanted to, we're going to give you the last word on this. So, oh as no, you, as press! You, as, as, you think, <laughs> <laughs> as you think about what we were talking about, what's the what's the highlight? What's the thing that stood out for you from the whole conversation? Hmm, what's the one thing that stood out for me? Is that eventually everyone finds their way and everything does get better? She's so pithy. <laughs> I mean, she just just condenses it down into like eight <laughs> words. That was pretty good. <laughs> you could write all my titles, please. That would yeah, be wonderful. Right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I will pay you. <laughs> oh, we love Alex. So anyway, continue healing, Alex. We want you to be here. Thank you. So yep. Thank you for well, we're glad you were able to join us and, and and considering what you've been going through lately, it's really appreciated. And thank you, Kay, also for being on the show and for sharing your story. And wow, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing some great stuff. Thank you so much, Alex and Walt. You guys have been wonderful to chat with. And uh, yeah, excited to keep this relationship going. Nice. And thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>